Hey. Yo, come on, Matt. Come on, man. She already had a tough match. Oh, now, wait. Look at this. What is this? I don't know what he's got in that bottle, but... He's polishing the belt. He thinks he's the champion. He didn't do anything to deserve that. Look at that stupid fanny pack. Amira can't believe it. He's got her belt. Hey, where's he going with that? That's not, come on, that's not yours. He walked out of the ring with the championship on, belt. Amira's your champion. That's Amira's championship. That's not Matt Brannigan's. The action never stops here on POW Pro Wrestling. He's Mr. Ooh La La, I'm the Commissioner Brian Zane, and Mr. I Cannot Believe What We Saw at the end of last week's episode. The relative newcomer to POW, Matt Brannigan, just walking up and stealing Amira's POW Pro Wrestling Championship belt. We heard some comments from him before the matchup, how he had a vested interest, he wanted to take on the winner of that match with Amira and Vinnie Massaro, but I didn't think he would go as far as to steal the physical belt. Yeah, Matt Brannigan is getting to the top any way that he can. He defeated Malcolm Flex clean right in the middle, challenged Jamira, took that Pal Pro Wrestling Championship belt, took it home, and then he provided us with this uh, video of his further adventures with the Pal Pro Wrestling Championship. Eh? Yeah, it's certainly uh, one to watch. Folks, take a look at this video update Brannigan sent us with the Pal Pro Wrestling Championship. <laughs> Pal Pro Wrestling. On my first night, I walked out of Eugene with the Pal Championship around my beautiful waist. And on September 21st, me versus Amira. Title on the line, but guess what? I'm gonna walk right out of Eugene with this thing still around my still beautiful waist. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. Whoa, you can talk? I can do a lot more than talk. That's a weird thing to say. Mm, don't you want to take naked photos with me? Oh, uh, no, not really. I mean, it's like just a little played out, you know, so it's not really, I don't really want to do it. Thank you, though. We'll see about that. Phil! What'd I say? I'm not getting naked with you. Nice try, though. Help! I'm stuck in the dryer. You're stuck? Oh my god, how can I help? Uh, taking your clothes off should help. Okay, if it'll help. <laughs> Wait a minute. Nice try, Belle. What the? Ready to get naked with me? All right, fine, fine, you win. One photo, one nude photo. Okay, will that shut you up? Yes, daddy. God, I never thought when I stole you that I'm getting nagged for naked photos. Wait, what? What? You stole me? Yeah, I stole you. You can't take naked photos of me without winning me. Come on, baby, why don't we gotta make it official? Let's just have some fun. If you want to consummate our relationship, you have to beat Amira. Ah, god damn it! Well, that is certainly one of the most interesting things I've seen someone do with the championship belt, and interesting is doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Mister, what do you make of what we just saw with Brannigan and the POW title? Brannigan is playing mind games with Amira. He's showing her he's going to do anything and everything that he wants with that championship belt, and if she wants to get it back, she's going to have to defeat him, not only 
physically but mentally can she i don't know certainly mind games you hit the nail on the head mister being played by brand again there will be a time in the very near future where amira will get a chance to not only retain her championship in name but also hopefully reclaim the physical belt well folks speaking of the pal pro wrestling championship our longest reigning champion in history funny bone well they've been distracted to say the least in trying to regain the championship ever since marcus eric's stabbed him in the back and interrupted and ruined his unholy matrimony. And so, needless to say, Funny Bone and Drexel, they have been on a mission to try and get back at Marcus Eriks and Despicable Me. But take a look at this footage from what happened a couple of weeks ago. Marcus Eriks laying down the challenge to Funny Bone and Drexel, saying if they can beat the Hess clan in an upcoming matchup, then Most Vile will get any match of their choosing against Despicable Me. Now, we know that Funny Bone and Drexel, they are mad as hell and they are ready to take some aggression out on the Hess clan, but you cannot discount Wade and Dom. They're going to be a big challenge for most violent. Funny Bone and Drexel have a Russian doll of challenges ahead of them. First, they must get through the Hess clan. Number one contenders for the Power Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championship, a formidable force. And then they face not one, not do, but toi of despicable moi. I think that Funny Bone and Drexel's overconfidence, their rage, is going to blind them to the obstacles they have before them and they're going to tumble and be crushed. Well, that's quite a prediction, but yes, if Drexel and Funny Bone can beat the Hesses, then they've got their shot against Despicable Me, and that's gonna be a challenge in and of itself. Let's find out how that match turned out right now. It's sure to be chaotic here on Pal Pro Wrestling. What kind of world do we live in? We're a demonic jerk off and the devil himself are cheered on a regular basis. What kind of world do we live in? I got some good old fashioned down home boys like the Hesk. Right? Well, folks, the powder keg, they know what they love. Funny Bone and Drexel, the devil himself, two of the most popular stars here at POW, but they are going to be in for a big challenge as they take on Wade and Dom, the Hess clan. And guys, Jeremy, Jonas, the stakes for this week's opener are so huge for Funny Bone and Drexel. This is big. They must defeat the Hess clan if they want a shot at Despicable Me. This is big. Jeremy, I know you- I've been you, in the ring with the, all of them. All of them. I, all of them. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Jeremy. Who do you got for this one? Hess Clan. I had a feeling you would say that. Jonas? I don't know. I got to go with the Hess Clan. I mean, you got you got the savvy of Wade Hess, and you got the, the unmatched strength of Dom. I mean, look at it. And, and not to mention, these two could fight each other. That's true. They have. Yes, and, exactly. And, and they've liked it. And they like it. That, well, that's, that's kind of their advantage. Absolutely. Most violent. They thrive on pain and destruction. They give as good as they get. And uh, But, you know, Wade and Dom, they are no slouches. They are tough as they come. And you got to believe that the Hess clan, they've got a lot on their mind here. They've been pursuing the Hammer Brothers as of late. Is Dom just oh, Dom wants in. That's right. Oh. All right. This is a bit of a deviation from the... I'm not sure the this is the greatest normal game plan right here look, look at dom hess we need to start testing around here man for, for what cte that, i mean one can look only at him. 
He wants to get in. Well, he's a he's a young go-getter, a growing boy, but right now he has got a big plate he's gonna have to work through here with Funny Bone already in a pretty dominant position. Dom, Manic prediction. I see what you did there. Yeah. Funny Bone, one of the most popular PAL Pro Wrestling what? champions you've ever had. Oh, he's, he's looking confused. Yeah, oh, there we go. There we go. Now, that's what I'm talking about. All right, well. Let's get Papa Hess in there. That's right. Start with the A game, and there's none tougher, short of the man staring across from him, than Wade by God Hess. His headband reminds me of him. I am a real American. I mean, the, uh, at a first glance, the Hess Ranch logo looked like a hammer and sickle. I thought he was working for the Russians. But here you see now it's a bit of a... You can go either way. You can go either way. A war of attrition here as we go into these opening shoulder tackles here. Neither man will the budge. Oh! Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Wade even lost no. his footing a little bit I there. know, right? Look at this. They are just colliding. No one's going to steal me. It's a stalemate. I mean, that's gonna not wear either of these guys yep. out. He's a legend, he's a legend. I thought he said he was electric. Oh, oh he licked it, he licked it. Oh, you don't wanna lick yeah. anything that's electric. No, you don't. You don't, you don't wanna lick Wade Hess. You don't, and you don't wanna lick both, electric or Wade Hess. Well, i tell you what, from a psychological standpoint, I think the point goes to most violent in this early going. But we don't go by points. Right here, you know that the Hesses are, like I mentioned, they see themselves, they are the number one contenders, the tag team yes. champions, recently beat the Flama Aces to earn the right from the previous number one contenders. Sort of and who was that? Aces. That was Flamin' Aces. Oh, okay. So you gotta believe they're looking for some momentum as well as they are no doubt chomping at the bit to get their hands on the champs, the Hammer Brothers. But now, we have the devil himself, the homicidal artist from Detroit Murder City. I'm talking about Drexel. Detroit. Nice collar and elbow tie up. Rare, Look at that. Rare wrestling move from Drexel, who's not above mind games himself. I think no. he, he thrives in it more than Funny Bone. Oh! Not a boy, Dom. Get him. The torque on that arm wrench, uh, but not, not, not uh, yeah. Oh, Drexel unfazed. Dom, I think, needs to put a little more torque into that arm wrench. Oh, that is a rarity for sure. He's uh, this kind of overhead suplex style, the oh! front chancery applied. There you go, good save by Papa Hess. Yeah. Things are getting heated here for the Hess clan. They gotta recover pretty so shortly. They shouldn't have done that. He's just a oh, boy. Yeah, no. Oh, this series of headbutts, that can't be good for either one of them. I mean, poor Dom's already got it bad enough as it is. Right. The headbutts are not gonna help him. Oh! Did he headbutt him again? And neither is that. Ran the torso, I guess, like a torpedo. Goodness gracious. Drexel is not the largest competitor you've seen at Power Pro Wrestling, but he still hits with full force, and you feel it. And the fireman's carry. What does Drexel have in mind here? Wait a minute. Nice job, Hess. All right, referee. Nice job, Wade. Referee Fidel. Knowing his son's in trouble. Oh, Fidel Hernandez yeah, is, going to count, is. is going to count that tag on the foot. Nice and job, Ivan Koloff. Wade Hess now with the advantage after the misdirection there. That was pretty good tag team tactics. That make Dom Nikita. <laughs> that is no. That's a disgrace to Nikita Koloff. <laughs> no. He's Nikita's leg. <laughs> now one look of, at this. One of them. One leg. And now the sickle. What do you call that? A leg drop. Dom kind of. putting the weight on top of Drexel's throat. I don't care how impervious to pain you are. You still gotta breathe. Exactly. No, and that right oh. there. Oh. That's gonna make it a lot harder to breathe right there. That's a leg drop. And Wade Hess now seems to be firmly in control and... Grind it, grind it, right in his eyes, for, yes. Former champion, Funny Bone, you can see kind of pacing now back yeah, and forth well, in the apron. He is just dying for a chance. He's never been a patient man. 
And that's just part of his problem right there. Surprise, he's holding on to the tag hey, rope. Singles match is one thing, but funny bone in a tag match, not so much. You gotta test, you know, tag match where you gotta depend on somebody else rather than just yourself. I mean, I don't mind that. I like when someone else does oh. All right, I, I'm, I'm with you. Clubbing blows to the back and the base of the neck by Dom, the, the baby of the Hess clan. He needs to spin around, though. He needs to put himself in between Funny Bone and Drexel. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I love it. Grab oh, Evan. Now that little was hair Drexel has left. Within inches away from the tag, but not enough. Got pulled back by that hair, those dreadlocks in the back of Drexel's head. Probably should get his stenches. Now. Maybe a weave. That the weave's gonna hurt him. Patriarch of the Hess clan now showing nice. his authority. Good spin around, baby. Big old slam right in the middle of the ring by Wade. And now, this is just a cocky cover. That's not gonna be a nearly enough. Nah, he didn't care. He wants to embarrass him. He almost got him, though. That's a oh, by the beard hair. Generous description. Let me just notice. That hurts worse than a lot of things. That mangy, gross beard. Oh, my goodness. Laid into him with that clothesline. Hasn't been washed since the Reagan well, administration. Say, how, how many weeks of food do you think is about up Oops. in there? Now, wait a minute. Enough to feed Somalia. Funny Bone, you know he wants to win this match more than anything. It's the only way he can get his hands on Marcus Eriks after everything the opportunity, the so-called opportunity, has done to him. Oh, you know, they kept that due to arms legs. I'd be more worried about trying to get my title back. And if I were Wade Hess, I'd be more concerned about future generations of the Hess clan. Oh, well, we've got one generation. That's enough. You make a good point, guys, about the championship, but Funny Bone, you know, you just don't go after somebody's family. You don't interrupt somebody's wedding, and that's what Marcus Eriks did. He crashed the wedding. It's supposed to be the greatest day of his life. Okay, yeah, whatever. Well, Brian I'd rather said, be a champion than get married. The wedding wasn't finished, so technically they weren't family yet. Hey, so. take my wife. <laughs> She's right there. Go ahead. That's a, oh. that's a pow pro wrestling first. Guillotine to right on the bottom rope. You can go to the Catskills with that kind of routine. Cover applied by Dom to no. Dom now starting to assert his authority. That's right. It's, it's almost like kind of looking into a mirror or some a future version of yourself. How dare you? They both got beards. They both got kind of a mangy look to them. Dom Hess is a very well-to-do young man. Yeah, absolutely. Like Just because he's on a cattle ranch doesn't mean you call him grangy. Grow up to be some kind of zombie oh. hobo like uh, Drexel here. A uh, hurdle chest first into that turnbuckle post. And I tell you, that's not a comfy pillow. No, but Drexel and Funny Bun are the two people that carry shopping carts around their hometown, gathering up grungy crap. Cat's cold. Oh. Yep. Dom walks right into a boot and then face uh, first into that it. corner post. I'll give it to Drexel on that one. Here we go. Drexel now makes it. He gets the tag. Funny Bone is now finally in. Again, big clothesline. Knocking Wade off as well. Good. Funny Bone fight like a man possessed because he knows what's on the line well, here. Because he is possessed. He wants to make short yeah, work. Yeah, there it is. Oh, oh that no. didn't work. That oh. didn't work. My bad. I would change your strategy, yep. young Dom. Series of strikes. Oh, God. God. That sense. That's a spinal cord injury. Right Amazingly, the stem. Dom's still kind of on his feet. Yeah, yep. Thank God for the I use the term of us. Use the term generously, but Wade, who is not the legal man, has now come in here. Trying to assert his authority. Look out. Oh, he got him. Oh, nope. Yep. Yeah, good block. Good block, baby. Funny bone. Oh, oh, dang it. Creative use of the ropes. I hate funny bone. But now what's he got in mind here? Oh, back to Dom now, who is the legal man, by the way. Oh boy, double stomp. Sends Dom crumbling to the mat. Folds him up. Ah, uh, here we've seen this before, folks, when he tears off the face paint. He unlocks another Get him. side. Get him. Oh! Yeah, good. Funny Bun ever been in trouble? No, right there he is. And now, oh, damn God. it. You can call that a Fez press if you want to by Drexel. Like a rabid raccoon. Followed by it bites a forehead. And that sends Wade. He's high tailing out of the ring. He wants no part of that, but Drexel in hot pursuit. Fighting here by the stage area. Dom now all by himself against the former POW champion. Wait a minute. Picks it up. Get him. 
Could be no, you can get out of this, Dom. Could be time for the Demon Driver. Oh, my God. Dom oh, is a wreck. That might be it. That's got to be it here. I mean, I'm realistic. But we know Funny Bone is not done. You know he uh, wants to put his High risk little... maneuver. Yeah, he's got to show off. Just, just say it, Brian Zane. He's, he's got to show off. He's going to put the exclamation yeah. point on this match. Uh -huh. here. Wait a here minute. Here we go. Here Marcus we go. Eric's. Oh, wait what? a minute. Marcus Eric's. What is <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. He just, he just got Funny Bone and Drexel disqualified. I think he just... Well, he didn't want him to win. That's he just right. cost them the match. He didn't want him to win. They had to win this match. Right, right. Okay, I get it now. I get it. Brilliant move. Brilliant move, Brian the Zane. The of this match by disqualification, the head square. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, here we go. Struck it. Brilliance. Well... That was a pretty smart strategy by Marcus Eriks. I'll give it to him. Striking Dom with that steel chair and, and causing the match to get thrown out. Folks, this is absolute insanity. You gotta believe that most violent are not done with Marcus Eriks after what we saw there. Oh boy, I do not like the look on their faces. Hey, what are you looking at me for? All right, all right. Everyone! Boy, folks, this is uh, not the way most violent ones start things off this week here on Pound Pro Wrestling. Well, that was quite the shrewd piece of business there by Marcus Eriks. You saw him run in at the end of the match. Clobber Dom Hess with a steel chair. In doing so, disqualifying Funny Bone and Drexel. They lose the match. They don't get their match with Despicable Me. I mean, I have to give it to Marcus Eriks. That was quite a smart way to get out of a match with Funny Bone. Marcus Eriks and Despicable Me continue to be one step ahead of Funny Bone. This long mind game. That's been going on for almost a year. Who knows how many more steps ahead Marcus Eriks is over uh, Fanny Bone and Drexel. Huh? We'll just have to wait and see how more, many more times he can outwit, outsmart, and outstrategize them. Well, certainly it was a smart move, but I can't say it was an honorable or a brave one because Marcus Eriks has been having this coming for a long time. Funny Bone is gonna fight like hell to try and get his hands on Marcus Eriks. And even though he couldn't win this matchup here thanks to Marcus's interference, I have a feeling that this is not over between the two of them by a long shot. Well, mister, you saw there the Hess clan winning the matchup. They're still the number one contenders for the PAL Pro Wrestling Tag Team titles. But as we saw last week here, Dove and Dangerous scored an upset victory over them. So they've got a shot here against Jack and Sledge, the Hammer Brothers, recently celebrating two years in the business, riding high as the champions. How are these young guns in Dove and Dangerous going to fare against Jack and Sledge? We're about to find out next.
Now, Dove and Dangerous, I'll tell you what's dangerous. Dangerous is working on a construction site and having to deal with things like electrical hazards, Move. falling objects, Move. hazardous chemicals, Move. moving vehicles, Move. air contaminants, Move. vibration related injuries, Move. and excessive noise. But the most dangerous thing of all is stepping into the squared circle with the brothers of construction, the hard hitting, hard hats, the bulldozing, pile driving, blue collar brothers, Jack, and the hammer brothers, because when you're a hammer, Wade Hess, as we get ready for this tag team championship matchup, we are joined here by the Hess clan who just improbably defeated most violent before the break. You guys have this on your mind. Those words must resonate with you as you are the number one contenders for the tag belts. Hey, before he starts to butter you up, he was talking trash about your match and how you guys weren't worth a crap. That's that's not a, that's not you what I said. You guys come to say, Brian Dave, the head clan, wish that Ryan had to come carry you. you guys open your mouth anytime you want, and I'll gladly close it, Daddy. Yep, right. there All it right. is. All right, well, nevertheless, folks, this match is for the most beautiful belts in the tag team scene, the Pow Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championship. Now hold on, hold on. I want to know before this thing even gets started, did anybody get this guy a pee test? Because no. he's, he's gotten too well too quick. There's no way you get better from right. the spleen that quick. This guy needs some drug testing. I agree. We need to find out there's some performance enhancing well, you drugs know, we're, about. We're not going to talk about that. I'm pretty sure they don't allow PEDs on the construction site. Well, hey, look at the size of this guy. He's the size of a brick truck. A brick truck full oh. of bricks. And Jack over there, well, he's about as smart as a pile of bricks. Well, there, there you just is. saw Frankie Dove just run into that brick wall known as Sledgehammer. And right now, Dove and Dangerous here getting their shot. But of course, as we established, it's Wade and Dom who are the number one contenders, regardless of who wins oh. this match. Oh my goodness, you do have a future shot owed to you. And I will give you that. And folks, I do have to say, Wade, if I'm, I'm being as respectful as possible here, if it wasn't for Marcus Ayers hitting Dom with that chair and getting oh, Buddy Bowman Drexel disqualified. Oh. Right? Don't you ever doubt the Hess clan and the plans of foot inside Wade Hess's head, because I'm telling your daddy, I'm light years ahead of you. I was probably to say the same thing. All right, I'll take your word for it. Right now we've got here, Big old hammer coming down from the second rope, and Frankie Dove, the self-proclaimed animal enthusiast, he's gonna have to crawl his way to the corner, but hopefully not sloth-like. Hey, you're Wait a minute. Yeah, you're, there we go, the brains are jack Hey, your son's over here, like, I don't know, I don't know what he's doing. I like, think he's trying to use some kind of analysis, but I like, think it's all in his head. I, I think he's like doing sign language? He's, like he's planning out our match of casual we're gonna get Jake Jackson, the hammer brother. He's certainly scouting his opponents well. He hasn't left eye contact in the ring. Has Dom Hess. Is he crazy? Hey, it's debatable? He's not quite right. Okay, all right, all right. But all right. you love him because he's your kid. <laughs> well no, I did, I get it. Oh! Head. Big slam there. I got by two of them. Steven Bradley here just using Jack's arm against him here. You know my favorite part about dumb and dangerous, Brian? What's that? The end part. There you go. Oh, front facing suplex into that senton. That's something to like about dumb and dangerous. I like this right here. Yeah. Oh, big side winding slam. They've got the advantage right now, and I love it. Here we go. Cover could have new tag team champions. Now, guys, uh, Wade, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Who are you looking forward to wrestling? Which team would you want to face off in a tag title match? I tell you, the Hess clan can take out any. Either one. Either one of these folks. Either one. But I tell you, if I oh. had my choice, I'd love to get a hold of them Hammer Brothers. Yeah, I would too. Nothing. Jeremy. It irritates me more 
Cubs and a bunch of YMCA posing. Yep. Feel like people dressing up like punks, like the Hammer Brothers. I mean, people sit there in Red Bull, but I think it's a lot Ooh. stronger than that, if you know what I mean. Jeremy, I just want to point out, you are one of the first tag team champions, but I was asking Wade that question. I don't care. I'm, hey, I was gonna, I was gonna, hey, I was gonna say, I'm, I'm all for these two right here. I, sitting I next bet to you me. are. I bet you are. What is it? what? Well, Dom is trying to say something, but Dom's he, speaking he, like Hebrew. He's, I think. he's not on heads, but nice stalling vertical suplex. We didn't get. We I, back a, I back a winner, and I know a winner right now, and the Hess clan is a winner. I'm like just telling you right there, Brian. Uh, he got out of that. He'd never been in that slamming situation. See? From Jack Hammer. The dad You're knows. You gotta listen up to what he's telling yeah. you. Well, you have, facts. you guys have been in wars with the Hammer brothers. We have. Both of us. Both All teams of here have. And they've both beaten you. Hey, hold oh. on. Why do you gotta say something like that? I'm just saying. Somebody the fact. better check his belly for an illegal substance. I bet you there's a steel plate in there. I, I would doubt that. More than that. Oh, there's boy. A whole, there's a whole Look out below. Frankie Dove is slammed hard down there with that. Could you imagine what he'd do at an IHOP all-you-can-eat pancake dinner? My goodness, that was a hard landing for Frankie Dove. That power bomb there was some serious business. And Brad Lee might need to check on him. Please. Oh my lord. Okay, I'll give you that. Here I'll we go. I'll give you that. I mean, that was a hard landing as well, but boy, that, that power bomb was something else. And now the champions seem to have things well in hand. They tell you what, the fans may be a little conflicted here as to who to cheer for. Both these teams are fan favorites. And if I were Stephen Bradley, I would have made a tag right there. Apparently, here we go. He's the dove part of dove and dangerous. And right now, Jack continuing to throw his weight around with Frankie Dove. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is the toilet that guy sits on. Who's in a bad way here, and boy, things are about to go from bad to worse. Oh, he shoved his own brother. Oh, I see it now. Wheelie barrel time. Just take all day here, yeah. fellas. All day. Sounds like they're loading yep. up with the payload. Oh, old army. Yeah, you guys wouldn't do that. You no. wouldn't wait around. No, no. yeah, I know. You're like too tough kid. for this. You're too tough for this. Oh, he's got to grandma's living room. Come right. on. Big yeah. wheelbarrow splash. That would never happen to wet the, the Hess plan. That never. Never happened to the Hess nope. compound. Nope. No wheelbarrows at the Hess compound. Gotcha. What'd you say? Wait, what? Dom, we'll, we'll try. Dom, I'm, Dom's saying something, but I don't. I don't. We'll get a fourth pair yeah, for you next time. We, I need. I need an interpreter. Right next now. time here. Oh boy. And wait, uh, oh, sledgehammer. Oh, oh, he's treating him like a toilet. The oversized load is just the bending. Oversized load. He is bending. He's about to get a Frankie Dove backwards. Sure. You got to believe that the champions have a lot on their mind. This title defense. I know the Hess clan breathing down their necks. And then there's this mystery coal, this lump in these. No, guys. there's not a mystery coal. We're all going to see it here in a second. Oh, no. Okay, oh. all right. Talking about tenacity, making it a rope like that with all that man on you. Yeah. That's a lot of denim. That's a lot of toughness on display here by Frankie Dove there. I mean, that's a lot of mass on top of him, and he was able to pull himself to the ropes. That's not very easy to no, do. No, it's not. So give him some credit, Brian Zane. I did. I literally just did. Oh, no. You're all over the Hammer Brothers. And underneath your suit here, you've got a shirt it says Hammer Brothers. That's, you know, that can be proven. Frankie Dove thrown into the corner. Look out, but puts up the elbow, sending Jack reeling for a moment. Frankie Dove trying to get some space, some breathing room here. I love it. That's what he needs as he yes. makes his way. Get after oh him. And here we go. The fresh man in, Stephen Bradley. Let's get dangerous. Come on, dangerous. Oh, this yeah. Don't let the bigger one in. Goodness. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Definitely not enough PPE in there for this. Bradley now. Who's looking great? He's putting putting on some mass lately, and he's yeah, getting he every bit of it with that power yeah, slam. What are you doing? Just Don't, pin him, no, you're idiot. fresh. You're fresh. Pin him. These youngsters here. No, pin him. The biggest. Oh, that's a downfall. One of the biggest opportunities. In yeah, the oh, okay. I was wrong. 
pin him, yes! Can we have new two, champions? Three! No. New cha no, come on, Bradley, that's a short count! Only two. This is the biggest opportunity that Devin Dangerous have had in their young careers. They could become tag team champions when it's all said and done. Hook him in, hook him in. Get those feet hooked in. There it is, that good, good job, good job. Here we go now. Tree of Woe yeah, drop kick. Choppers. And now you've got Dove and Dangerous putting in overtime. They've punched in their card as they are on the precipice of yes. championship glory. I love to see more than the Heaven Brothers kick the on Top it's rope. over! It's over! Top rope clothesline. Get That's to him! Man, you dug the Come on! Down. Might have taken something out of Dangerous as well. The cover two! Oh my god! That is two and seven eighths right there. You can see the seven eighths? The distance there from Bradley's hand to the mat for that third count. No, I keep it from, no, no keep don't. It from yes, thank you. Keep it from Sledge already. No! Uh, oh. Sledge is in. Frankie Dumberson and what Good a size mismatch, guys. Oh boy! It's a metric ton out there. I mean, it's a size disadvantage no matter which member of Dove and Dangerous. No, it's not. I mean, how do you stop the rock of Gibraltar? Brad Lee is going to have to exercise his authority here. Get Steven out of the ring. Uh oh, uh -oh. No, no, no. Don't Rikishi him. I think that he's going to back no, it up, guys. No, don't back that thing up. Dove. Yeah, get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out. That's going to suffocate him. Now that is a workplace hazard right there. I don't care who you are. We need OSHA out here. Again. No! Slash going two for two. Moves. I mean, they're, boy, they they hear the beeping and they still don't move. You hate to see it. And Dom next to me is not liking that, He's guys. He's chewing his knuckle. He might have to what chew. What does that mean? He might have to chew his. Oh! Itchy hands oh. yeah. means he's feeling lucky. He just threw the boulder at him. And now the oh, champions may have this yeah, one in the bag. Oh, I hate, I hate this. This sets pandering. I hate. They wouldn't do this to the Hess clan. Because the Hess clan is yep. a serious wrestling Yes. Daddy. Yeah, exactly. Things looking grim here for Dove and Dangerous. Their tag team championship plans could go up in yeah, smoke. Yeah, there it is, there it is. You can't push it. Get your ton. Oh, Diesel yeah. Hammer avoided, but for how long? Oh, goodness. Have you seen it? Have you ever seen Operation Dumbo Drop? <laughs> yeah. We gotta get these kids out of the way here. It's a serious business. Oh, oh. no! That's what Bradley! He screwed up, Bradley screwed up! No. Wait a minute, counters no. it! No. 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 And they did it! No. 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 Well, well, Wayne and Dom, you want to be the wear the goddamn costumes out there, like the damn village people. This is just great. You never see the head clan out there with costumes on. Wayne, Wayne and Dom, you know who is next on your dance card. You're going to be facing still the retaining tag team champions. A valiant performance by Dub and Dangerous, ultimately falling to the defending champions. Jeremy, that was an intense matchup for certain. I'm telling you right now that Bradley, referee Bradley, has that whole thing up. Hey, Rose should have to hand the belt over to Dub and Dangerous. Yeah, here we go. Now, wait a minute, I guys. Love, I love hey! It. I love it. Wade and Dom, they're not going to wait for a future championship Bradley. matchup. They're going to jump him right now. This is ridiculous. This war has been going on for months between the Hammers and the Hesses, and they are far from done yet. Look at this fight going all over the place here, right into the front row. I don't know. You know, Jeremy, I do have an idea of what it's going to take for these guys to finally settle their ah, differences. Yeah, it's going to take an all-out war. You know it. All right, that's enough. But you got this is getting ridiculous. These two teams have been fighting and fighting for far too long. Break it up, guys. I know a way we can settle this. At Wicked Game in Kaiser, Oregon, we're going to bring back the Steel Cage. And we're going to lock you two teams in. Two teams go in, and one team leaves for the Pow Tag Team Champions. 
How's he jumped up and decided to give a cage match? I'm the commissioner. How's that for a proclamation? Okay, well, yeah, great. Hey, if they want to fight like animals, they can fight like animals, and we'll see who comes out on top the well, tag hey, team I'm champions. Not, hey, listen, I'm not in it, so I, I kind of want to see it. Folks, we have one match to go. Jeremy, you better get ready because it's time for the Flex Gauntlet against the Jarmy. I'm not worried about that. It's one on us. Well, folks, you saw there the Hammer Brothers retaining their tag team championships, but of course the Hess clan, the number one contenders waiting in the wings. The brawl began in earnest right after that closing bell, and that's when I had to step in and say, hey, we're not going to allow for this anymore. So at our next event in Kaiser, Oregon, we are going to settle it between the two of those teams in a solid steel cage, and one of those teams is going to come out on top, the champions. It's going to be a wicked game in Kaiser when the Hammer Brothers defend against the Hess clan. Finally, no, nothing on the outside, no browning through PK Park, locked inside, and I think that uh, Jerk and Sledge are in for it, huh? Uh, these two teams have certainly waged war, shedding blood, sweat, and tears across all of Oregon in very different styles of matches. This cage match might be the one to level the playing field once and for all. Well, folks, let's talk about this week's main event. Let's talk about Malcolm Flex and his war against the Jarmy, or as I call them, a bit of a goof troop. These guys have made Malcolm Flex's life a living hell for the last several months, and the only way Flex is going to get his hands on Jonas Albert Robinson is if he defeats all the other members of the Jarmy in a gauntlet match. Now, mister, we know Malcolm Flex's history with gauntlet matches. This guy would host gauntlets himself and would come out on top. So do you think he's going to fare well against these guys in the Jarmy? Well, this is no hit the Flex challenge. Jonas Albert Robinson has made it clear he has it out for everyone who caused you to regain the commissionership from him in the first target he's chosen is Malcolm Flex and I think that Jonas has more than one trick up his sleeve. In fact he has four the members of the Jami who take down and punish Malcolm Flex for his crimes against the Jami. Well can the honorable Malcolm Flex survive the gauntlet and get his hands on Jonas Albert Robinson? We're about to find out. The gauntlet match is next. All right! Playing in at 280 pounds, from Tacoma, Washington, he is the most sizzling, the most loving. Uh-oh, now wait a minute. Oh, hell no. The Jarmy gauntlet apparently has gotten underway prematurely. Joey Thornton and Mickey Mantoya putting the beat down, as, as well as Jeremy Blanchard and Jonas Alvin Robinson joining in. Spencer Scott, I'm in shock here. Well, I shouldn't be too surprised. Absolutely, this is typical behavior from this group. As we try and collect ourselves here, make sure that everything's working in tip-top shape here in the commentary booth. Jonas. Jonas Alvin Robinson and Jeremy Blanchard, typically my broadcast colleagues on here on Pal Pro Wrestling. But now we are joined by Spencer Scott and King Naja. Carlos, what the heck is even going on? Did they even start the match? I, I'm not entirely sure if the bell rang. Naja, I know you have a vested interest oh, as we see a double team move. I have a vested interest in the outcome of this one. Now the match has officially oh begun. This Bless could be it already. Oh. These cats, man, we've had so much trouble with the Jarmy. It's been absolutely ridiculous. Jonas Albert Robertson getting involved in our last match that we had, the, um, the, the six man. Actually, low bridge and flex ended up going out of the match. Couldn't continue to compete. Oh. Absolutely ridiculous. Jonas Albert Robertson, he, he can never win a match on his own. He's always got to resort to tactics like that. Well, the thing is, right now, he has to trust his army to actually get in there and do the job for him because if flex can get through Mickey Mantoya, right, then he gets through, I'm assuming, Joey Thornton. Right? He's got to go through every single member of the Jarmy. Oh, oh my God. God. Oregon Power gets a Jonas, and he could be one down, and there you oh, go. One, one down. down. One down, three to go. One down, three to go. That's the way. Flex the Hawks nice, are feeling it right now. Nice oh. seeing you, Mickey Mantoya. Joe look out behind, right behind you, Malcolm you. Look out. Don't, don't take too much time. Oh. And there's the uh, the wild man, the loose cannon of the Jarmy. The, the youngster, Thundercat. The youngster and Joey Thornton. He is not wasting any time. Side rush 
Christian oh Lake sweep. That was dangerous. To Malcolm Flex, who is already behind the eight ball here. It looks like, this, it looks, Jeremy Gauntlet It looked like Flex hit his head really hard on that uh, side of Russian Lake sweep there. And then Joey goes right back to the head. Strategic Spencer, I oh. think that's right on purpose. That's right. We have Spencer Scott here, of course, getting another rep as a commentator. You know, I had such a good time last time, I had to put the cans on one more time. I might do it a little more often. Yeah, I think you should. I think, I think we both should, in all honesty. Well, Thornton here standing tall, no doubt making Jonas proud as Jonas is uh, over there. Parking derogatory comments, no doubt. At the sizzling, loving, see, unforgettable talent. That's the issue with Joey Joe Thornton. He, he is a wild man. He is a, 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 a un, unhinged, if you would, um, Brian. And the thing is, he took his attention off Flex. He gave Flex an opportunity to regain oh. a little bit of energy. Again, Joey now. Joey too concerned on, with the man. cameras. You got to stay focused. Flex stay isn't the in, one. Now, this is a yep. YouTube product. Oh, yep. oh man. And Thornton now. Yep. Jettison out of the ring, but this is uh, guys, still in play. This is not an over-the-top matchup, but they don't let Flex must in make his, his way through his all the opponents comes. here. Of course, Flex, guys, he's no stranger to gauntlet matches. In the early days of POW, this man even initiated his own. Oh, hit the Flex gauntlet matches to prove that. his strength and superiority. I bet you that, remember that too, that, Spencer, don't you? I, I sure do, because that was the first ever match I had at POW Pro Wrestling. That's, That's right. right. So Flex knows how to go long term. He's got the, the machines. Fans. He's built for show and for go. Is the honorable Malcolm Flex. The fans are 100% behind Flex, guys. They are 100% behind Flex. They want to see him get his hands on one Jonas Albert Robinson. The powder oh, keg yeah. fully behind Flex, who is truly oh, oh, backhand. Back. A one man army as he backhands Thornton right in the teeth. Oh, good. A nice solid shot. Follows up with that. Close line in the corner and look out. Big oh, Samoan big flexing up. By Flex. Flex, yeah, you're right, Spencer. Flex is flexing up. And these fans are 100% behind Flex. Flex Gotta is built for moment like, moments like these with his back against the wall. This is an unusual situation, too, because Flex is literally surrounded by oh, Jarmy members. Flip. Thornton with a sunset flip attempt. Got Could have him here. One, Gauntlet two, coming oh, over. No. Had the, had the arms trapped, too. Look at this. Thornton now shows some legs. Oh, oh, my God, that flex. Double leg style. style. I was going to say he was showing signs of life, but I don't know now, guys. Oh, you mentioned flexing up. He's flexing you up know, now. You know what happens when they pull the straps down. Straps go down. It's going down 100%. Joey Thornton is going to be in a world of pain. He better get up and get to his feet, because if he stays down, it takes too long. Flex is going to drop the gavel. Flex feeling himself here, getting high risk. What is Mickey risk, Mantoya doing? Look out for Mickey Mantoya, who just takes a face full of boot. Oh, goodness gracious. And there's where, the, him right in the, there's the, the, where the height of Thornton really comes into play. He didn't have to go high for that high knee, right He's to the right face. In the a little inexperience here shown from Joey Thornton. He Wait, this is Jonas, long. Jonas getting blatantly well, involved here. Referee Bradley allowing, allowing this to pass. I would just disqualify Thornton on the spot here and let Flex move on. 100%. Bradley. Letting it go, I guess. Yeah, that's one way to celebrate your third anniversary in the business. Oh, like goodness. Your right in his bald head. Flex paying. Oh, my God. Did he Fly. drop the Making pay for it. Making Thornton pay for it in spades uh, with that yeah. big shoulder tackle. That's it. That's three. Joey that's Thornton three. is down. Oh, and then Jeremy Blanchard right in now on the attack going right back to Flex. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, the teacher versus the student, one would say, right? Oh, goodness. Oh. There's that goodness. inverted atomic drop. Jeremy Blanchard, who twisted the knife and stabbed his brother in the back at PK Park, Boy, now part of the Jarmy. Boy, Diddy, and taking orders from Jonas Alva Robinson right. just to do everything despicable he can do. It's, it's, it's re reprehensible, if you will. Jo hey, Jonas calling Blanchard his consigliere. He probably can't even spell consigliere. He can't even spell Jarmy. Ooh, he hit the strut now. You can spell Crazy strut. Uh, come on, Flex, you gotta fight through. Thornton is trying to gather his wits about him, but he is oh. out of this gauntlet match. Oh, Staying no. at ringside, though, as we saw with Mantoya oh, no. as well. He goes back to another bionic elbow. These guys know each other very well. They were members of the Masaro family, you oh, might recall. I do recall, indeed. Oh, and it was Flex who was excommunicated from the family, thanks in part to the Blanchard brothers. And now, You've got Flex uh -oh. trying to get some revenge. You got you got yeah. uh, you got uh, JB on skates. Knock loose. He is wobble legs for sure, and he's now got, he's taking a knee. Oh jeez, I think he got Healy's inside that. Oh, and once again, is that a low blow? You, come on, man. Come on, he's Bradley. Gonna let him Bradley. Touch like that. I don't know. Ring the bell. That's a disqualification. Blanchard's out. And the referee uh -oh. caught it. Beat you on the low blow. Now wait a minute. Does that mean Flex? 
Now, wait a minute. How is so the referee the not winner, aware but what, what of this? What is going on right now? Bradley, are you kidding me right now? Bradley is completely distracted by Jeremy Blanchard. They got to restore some order here. But the damage has been done. Mantoya this and Thornton just brutalizing oh, Flex. A damn job. Brad, you need to get in there and get Come involved. On, what is this? Break it up. My goodness, Jonas Albert Robinson. He's the next ridiculous. one in line. But he's going to have a huge handicap. He's going to have a huge handicap as all three other members of the Jarmy are whomping away at him, and Bradley's just sitting there. What is even going on? Is the match over or is the match not well, over, Brian Zane? I would say that round of the gauntlet is over. Blanchard was disqualified, and by that... Oh, Jesus. But all right. Is he restarting? What are you... Now, wait a minute. What's even happening this here? This isn't right. This is not right. What are, you, what are you doing? Thornton, Joey what Thornton you? making Bradley do the count. Well, what this is, is ridiculous. Going on here? That, I don't think that counts as a three. I don't even that know what to call win. this. And now they're just beating the stuffing out of Flex. This makes no sense Nothing whatsoever. Nothing sacred anymore. This is ridiculous. You know what? No, this is wrong. The Jarmy this coming out on top, on if so you want to call levels. it that. But that was the least honorable way to beat someone in a gauntlet match I have ever seen. They already hit a 4 on 1 advantage. Terrible. And now it's just a mugging. It's a gang beatdown of Malcolm Flex. And the powder keg is incensed. It's ridiculous. I can't sit back and watch this anymore. This is crazy. Hey, hey, where are you going? Hey, King Naja has left are you? the broadcast okay. booth. All right, you got this. You got this, big dog. No, wait there a minute. You go. There you go. Naja's had enough. He's had enough. He's saving his bro. He's saving his man. King Naja, who you Wind know you should up. run with oh. the Jarmy, no doubt. Oh. But this is, oh, no, he's oh, trying no. to save his friend Malcolm Flex. Oh, come on. Those guys go way back. They're Flex has trained nausea. This is what real brothers do. They've been through thick and thin. But right now, it's not looking good for them. This is absolute insanity. It is a four on two beatdown. As King Nausea was trying to help Flex, it was already a stacked deck with the Charmy getting involved. And now, look at this. They got Flex tied up and pinned to the ropes. As the beating continues, and look at this. Making Naja watch. Making Flex watch the beating of Naja. And the, this is ridiculous. Oh my goodness, I think this is gonna give, gonna give Naja internal injuries here at the rate they're going. Somebody do something, please. This is absolute insanity. The referees need to do more. Yes, get gotta, security in there. Come on, security, there. we gotta get you in here, come on. Break this up for come Pete's on, sake. Oh no. Oh no. Now wait a minute. Uh -oh. Damn it, get your hands off of Thornton. Who hired these guys? The Jarmy now is completely out of control as they continue to put the hurt on Malcolm Flex and King Naja, who is now busted open. I think he's bleeding from the mouth, Spencer. Oh my god, he is. He sure is. And now what's he doing? Is that a chloroform rag? He, he, he might have internal injuries the way he's bleeding out the mouth. That's this not is, normal. This is serious, guys. We need to. Hey. Hey, don't let him talk to you like that. Hey, don't, no, don't let him talk to you like that. I cannot believe, like that. I cannot believe what the Jarmy have done here tonight. Joey Thornton is brash as they come. Joey Thornton, talk about Jeremy Blanchard, talk about Jonas Albert Robinson. Oh, disgusting. Two guys who wouldn't know honor but kicked him in the head. I'd love to bust up Jonas again one more time. This is, this is sad. This is, this is getting out of control, guys. Jonas Albert Robinson, this is low even for you, pal. Folks, we gotta, we gotta, what, how we gotta we, get some semblance of order do, here. How do we move, how do we move? How do we move past this? Nothing's being done. Come on, oh enough's God, enough. Enough's busted. enough. Oh, he's got something going on. Stop this right now! Are you done? Yeah, maybe if you don't get suspended, pal. 
But once again, the Jarmy uh, finds a new low, a new cellar to descend down to. You saw what happened there at the end. It became a three-on-one mugging of Malcolm Flex. Four-on-one, even. Well, it's decimation for Malcolm Flex, certainly. And then Jonas Albert Robinson waltzes in and gets the pinfall victory over Malcolm Flex. But that was anything but honorable. And you saw what they did to King Naja afterward. Naja, who's been a friend and who's been a protege of Flex's for so long, he tried to go in there and defend the honor of his mentor, and you saw what happened. The Jarmy laid out nausea, left him bleeding out of his mouth. I mean, eventually the Jarmy are going to have to atone for these crimes they've been committing. Well, King Nausea likes to talk a lot, and so uh, Jonas Elbow Robinson feed. What better way to show him up, shut him up, and make him peek at blood into his mouth, huh? Well, one thing's for sure. At our anniversary show, Bumps in the Night 3D, on Saturday, October 19th, it is going to be a level playing field. I know that Flex and Naja, hopefully, he'll be recovered enough, and they will be taking on the Jarmy. And who knows, there might be a couple other surprises in store for the Jarmy in that one. Join us next week here on PAL Pro Wrestling when Jaden the Unbelievable takes on Marcus Eriks in singles action, plus a rematch between Charlie Avell and the Playboy Zay Perez, and get this, mister, you'll be handcuffed to Caleb Tennedy. And then in our main event, Amira hopes to regain the physical PAL Pro Wrestling Championship belt when she defends her title against Matt Brannigan. That's happening all next week, folks, but until then, for Mr. Ooh La La, I'm Brian Zane, and we'll see you next time.